like to introduce photographer Magda Indigo, um, who's kindly agreed to do an interview. And uh, thank you very much for that, Magda. Um, You're welcome. Um, I'd like to ask you a few questions, which I hope people will find interesting. I know there are a lot of people curious about your work uh, and how you see the world and everything. So, um, without further ado. Um, when did you start taking pictures? From a very young age. I mean, I grew up, my grandparents had a camera uh, and wherever they went, they took it with them. Uh, same thing for my parents, uh, so as far as I can remember. And the great thing was, they let me use it, no matter how tiny I was. Can you tell us what type of photography is your favourite uh, your favorite genre? I am best known for my flower work. However, I do not consider myself just a flower photographer. Um, I think if you are a good photographer, you can photograph anything. But when you talk about preference, uh, yes, I do like photographing flowers, obviously, but I also enjoy photographing people. Another thing that people are often interested in uh, is what equipment you use. When you have photographed for that many years, uh, obviously I come from the old school, um, film and because of that I have used an unbelievable amount of different cameras from film like I said to now the digital era. Um, one of the cameras that I have preferred was the Nikon F4. For a long long time I had two and they were my favorite cameras. Um, then there was the Hasselblad and now of course we are in the digital era and there I have grown with the different cameras. And what lenses are your favorite lenses Magda? I like zoom lenses. For my flower work I use a fixed lens, the 60mm, which is my macro lens, and on the Hasselblad it's uh, Carl Zeiss, 80mm. Uh, but overall, yes, I do like a zoom lens because it gives me a range from nowadays very wide, which sometimes you need in certain situations, but as I am so fond of details, to tell a whole story, it is good that you can zoom in to really hands uh, or whatever you want to yeah. have the detail of. Yeah. Okay. And can you tell us a bit more about where the idea came from to photograph on a black background? Well, I have often said it, I think if you are a creative, you are not just creative in one field, but in different fields. Now, one of my backgrounds is that I used to paint with oils, with watercolors, and also do uh, pastels with the soft pastels. I was born in Belgium, in Flanders, in Brugge, and there when you drive through the countryside, you will, see, you used to be able to see the old farmhouses, and what it was, was they would whitewash the walls, but on the bottom there would be a black tarred um, strip, about almost a meter high, and that was against. Um, moist moisture uh, that was also against uh, insects and all kinds of things but the farmer's wife 
would usually love flowers and what would she do somewhere around the house against the black there would be a flower border. Now I had often seen that and one day I decided that I was going to make an oil painting of <laughs> flowers and I made it a black background because that's the image that I had in front of me and I can show you one of the paintings that I do have with the black background that's and that was painted in 1989 And that's actually where the idea, uh, they just popped out the colors and from that moment on in photography, because I did go on to f more photography later and that's when I decided that since I wanted to know more about what light did in photography, I started to concentrate on taking photographs in the studio with different lights, different lenses, different cameras and flowers are a great subject because of all the different colors, the different textures, the different shapes and because I had such a vast knowledge by then of flowers although I was raised in the city I was a real city girl but I always had um, an interest I've always loved flowers and I started to grow them myself and that's actually where it then came from uh, to me it seemed the obvious choice to learn about light and also what I do like about flowers is they each have their own character well that's what I see in it uh, <laughs> What advice can you give to new photographers, novice photog photographers and amateurs who are starting out and wanting to learn more about photography? Do you have any pearls of wisdom to share with them? Yes, I do. One, enjoy your photography. It will come through in your images. If you do something that you enjoy, it always shows. Um, and also, don't be, be afraid to try out things, new things, new lighting, new reflectors, whatever they are. It doesn't have to be expensive. I've always said that. I mean, everything reflects from a plain piece, a sheet of white paper to silver aluminium foil anything will reflect light there and put an accent there where you want it and you get better and better at it uh, that's how i learned don't be afraid to experiment 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 right back to what characteristic do you think you need to have to be a successful photographer you have to love what you do. I've said that before. You have to be very determined. Um, not afraid to put in the hours because good photography is often time consuming, especially in the flower photography. That's what I'm talking about here. Plus, they often mention the word passion now, what I call passion is an absolute madness that you must have. And they like to call it passion. And if that's it, well, then I have got it, I'm sure. <laughs> um, could you tell us what your uh, favorite flower is? That is a difficult one. I like all, all flowers, uh, really. I've just finished a series of the humble dandelion, so from what is considered a weed to 
the most beautiful orchids. Um, yes, I like all flowers. I don't have a particular favorite. And what's your dream in, in terms of your photography? I have achieved most of my dreams, I'm fortunate to say. Um, they've sold all over the world. However, I have one dream and that is that is that I would love to have an exhibition with about 10 images but really large, 10, uh, a meter on a meter, uh, you know, that they really, yes, that, that is one of my dreams uh, that I have left. Could you tell us how you managed to get such beautiful, clear, sharp images on the on the black backgrounds? Your lighting is uh, absolutely exquisite, and uh, there's a, a real sense of quality that comes out of uh, every piece that you make. Each flower is different, so each flower demands a different lighting. I have no magic formula that says, look, you plonk down flower after flower and they're all there. It doesn't work like that. I see a flower, the flower, <laughs> I've often said it, I don't talk to my flowers, I just gladly listen to them. Um, it is a fact. I buy flowers or I, I go into the garden, I see a flower that I like or that is photogenic and I bring it into the studio and usually you know, it's the flowers that tell me what or how I am going to photograph it. I can tell you that I don't use flash. I don't like the effect that flash has. So it is continuous light but then also uh, small uh, other light sources and that can be anything from a torch to you name it. Magda, could you tell us what your any sources of inspiration that you have? I've always been from a very young age uh, worried that I would be influenced. I didn't want to compromise my own vision. So although there are many photographers and I like their work and I can appreciate it, I try not to look too much, too closely, just in case that I would, you know, be influenced by it uh, and yeah, that, no, I, I want to have my own style and keep it that way. Um, Magda, could you tell us um, about any of your favorite images and perhaps share some stories about uh, how you made the image or what it mean, what that image particularly means to you? Well, a couple of years ago, I had two beautifully trained dancers, uh, a man and a woman, and we had them in our studio and there was, again, I had a preconceived idea because that's usually how it works for me. Um, I get my best ideas after midnight, I'm a night person. Um, so we had them in the studio and I wanted to try out some things like how do you get movement into an image and you do that with strobe lighting. Now, many nowadays call themselves strobists because they use flash, but it's not just using flash that makes you a strobist. Strobe photography is actually different flashes going off at the same time, uh, and you know, with the small intervals, uh, I mean, so the, subject the dancers in that case you they did the movement either a jump and as the flash goes off the camera is open 
and it registers the different stages of the movement and that to me was fascinating because photography to me is such a static medium and I wanted movement in it and that is a series that I really have enjoyed and I still love those images uh, very much. I did some in black and white because it was still the days of film and I did some in color which I love tremendously, um, yes. I hope that answers your question. It does, yes. Of, obviously, um, they are not the only photos that I, I like, but when you just asked me the questions, those were the images that just came in front of my eyes. Very interesting that there weren't your uh, flowers, which are probably your most well-known uh, images. My flowers, like I have said, uh, they were they started out as a light exercise. I wanted to know, photography is all about light, and I wanted to know what light does. And because of the training that I had had in art history and uh, painting and all of that, I knew about composition, and I also knew exactly where there is a shadow and there also comes in the vast knowledge that I have of flowers. I know when there, where there can be a shadow and where not. That's great, that's great, very helpful. Um, Magda, thank you very much for taking the time to uh, do this interview with me. I uh, really appreciate it and hopefully we'll be able to uh, do another interview in the future again. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure.